I did it. You know, I, I lost 143 pounds in nine months. A year later, I gained it all back. What up, squad? Thanks for clicking on today's vlog. This is gonna be an exciting one. I'm still here in, in LA. The weather's a little suspect, but I'm gonna make the most of it. Can't control that. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm, a, I'm such a car guy. But before I get into the car, I'm here for a training. I don't know if I included this information in the last vlog that I posted, but I'm here for a training. So I came to LA to do the workshop, life-changing information. It's, it's basically gonna prepare me to be more of, of service to you guys, which is exciting. So I came here, I spent thousands of dollars to be in the room, and uh, it was well worth it. It was well worth it. Anyway, I'm a car guy. Been a car guy since I was a kid, and one of my favorite cars in the world is the, R is the Audi R8. It's our last day in LA, so I figured, hey, let's rent an R8 and just cruise the city and really just enjoy, enjoy myself. I got a lot of old friends. I used to live here two years ago. Well, four years ago, I lived here two years. And uh, I have a lot of old friends that I haven't seen in a while. And uh, so we're just gonna cruise, man. Let me show you guys the car. So they're finishing up the wash right now. How much longer do you think, buddy? Maybe five minutes. Five more minutes? Yeah. Okay, good. It took me a while to, to figure out my, my flow when it came to maintenance. Weight loss to me was the, e was the easy part. Yeah. Like losing the weight was easy, but maintaining it is a whole nother beast. Yeah. And yeah. so is this goddamn hill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over here we <laughs> We're wheezing like, like I never worked out in my life. Well, you Jeez. know, I, I didn't work out for 143 days to be exact. Really? Yeah, because I had the skin removal. Oh, I'm still wearing this belt. Yeah. But, oh, uh, man. So I was in the bed for 46 days, you know, in the bed, like bed ridden, you uh -huh. know. Um, but after my first skin removal was 2017. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really realized, like, the importance of nutrition. Because, mm. man, you're not in the gym, you're not doing anything. So, I mean, the only thing you can control is your nutrition. Yeah, that's true. You know, and. I mean, I believe that to be the case, that nutrition is everything. I would have gotten into personal training if I felt like that creates sustainable change. Mm -hmm. But man, I see people in and out of the gym all day long that never make a single progress. And they're there every day. Yep, yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And That's true. I used to be that, you know, so I can understand it. So the nutrition is, is definitely, I mean, we all see the memes, 80% or whatever the, the statistic is, yeah. is nutrition. Yeah. But more so than just nutrition, and this is the part that I'm about to double down on with content, is the psychology. Dude. You know? I mean, the, the emotional aspect of weight loss and lifestyle change is everything. Yeah. You know, I think that a lot of people neglect that. Yeah. So all they're focusing on is the weight numbers and all that. But dude, they have a gang load of stuff that they got to work on. Yeah. You're not 356 pounds because you want to be. No, no. <laughs> you know, you're not an addict for five years because you want to be. Yeah. You know, but I think that that lifestyle change, like, man, takes incredible work on the depths of it, right? But see, the thing is, it takes a lot of work, but people are doing the work in the wrong areas in the, of their life. They're putting all their energy to, oh, what? What workout should I be doing? How many reps? How many sets? <laughs> yes, that stuff's important, but it's not that important. Yeah. You, you shouldn't be focused on that part. Focus on re, you know, changing your relationship with food, re, re, rehabbing your habits, yeah. period. 
Well, and you know? I think habits, you know, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of times I come into contact with individuals or I'm working with them and they've been overweight for 10 plus years, 20 yeah. years. Yeah. And in eight weeks, they're not in the shape they want to be and they're upset. Yep. You know, and I try to tell them that you're not going to break those habits <laughs> in six to eight weeks. No. You know, the, the emotional eating, the binge eating, whatever your habits are. I mean, dude, it takes constant work. It does. You know, but I think that that's where people get it confused, you know. And I talk about this a lot is they think there's a destination in this. Dude, no, no. The minute you get to where you want to be. Okay. You're going to find something working. else to, com to complain about or, or to something else to feel insufficient about. It's, it's never, oh, I made it. No. Never. No, there's not an end goal. I, I think that, and the thing is, is that if you do an hour a day of cardio, if you under eat to lose that 100 plus pounds, you're going to have to keep doing that to maintain that. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, that's, and people, again, you know, it's, everything's instant gratification, man. I yeah. mean, we all get stuck in it, you know. And the fitness, the fitness industry doesn't help because they, I feel like the fitness industry program people to want instant results. Oh, yeah. You know, it's one of those things, just like everything else, money, it's a, it's a money driven yeah. thing. And they, I feel like they're giving people the wrong idea. Oh my God. When people want it quick, yeah, you know, they don't want to work for it. But I tell, I say that if you stick, skip your steps of where you're going, when you fall down, you have no idea how to get back up. Straight it's up. It's impossible. Yeah, you know? that's true. And I like that. But I think that comes not just with weight loss. I think it comes with whatever it is that you're trying to do, build a business, whatever. Yeah. You know, I think that you've got to really make those uh, sturdy stepping stones. But I also think that there's a lot of times you're going to falter mm -hmm. and you got to go back and refocus and resituate those stepping stones. Yeah. Make sure they're strong, right? Yep. You know, I say this all the time. You could take everything from me now, my business, all my clients, everything, but you can't take away the stepping stones and the work ethic that came to get here. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So like rebuilding that will happen if that happened, you know? For sure, for sure. What up squad, welcome back to the podcast. I'm doing something very unique right now. I am sitting on a bench in Runyon Canyon uh, in LA and I'm talking to my man Noah Kingry, who, ha if you're not familiar with Noah, he has a phenomenal transformation story. Make sure you follow him on IG at the, so you, you, you can say it, my bad. Go no ahead. problem. It's transformational truth. It's, yes. spelled, it's spelled exactly how it's spelled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to clarify that nowadays. For sure. Um, I just wanted to have a conversation with someone who understands the process of transformation. Right? Mm -hmm. Because the word process, it's a, it's a process. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we all hear the term, you have to respect the process. But if you don't have insight on the process and you don't understand what the process is it's kind of hard to respect it right so with this episode i want to i want to achieve that i want to give our listeners some unique perspective on the process of body transformation so i, I kind of want to speak through the scope of that right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so if you had to describe to the people what the process was like uh in you know a few minutes Right. Because I know it's it's hard to contain that. It's a, it's a it, you can you can it, it's an elaborate explanation, I'm pretty sure. But if you can contain it to two minutes right now, mm -hmm. how would you explain the process of body transformation? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think body, I mean, transformation in general. I mean, it is a process. You're right. Um, but that process has got to be done one step at a time. Uh, I think a lot of times we you get into a journey, let's say for weight loss, and you want you're already focused on chapter thirty. Yeah, but you you're at chapter one. Like mm -hmm. you, you have got to build and work into each chapter because as each chapter comes, it's going to teach you valuable lessons. You yes. know, I, I think that when it comes to um, even going through an extreme weight loss, I, I'll give you an example. So I, I've lost 190 pounds. It took me a year and a half. You go from losing every single week and getting that scale mm -hmm. number and then you're at quote unquote maintenance and you don't know what you're chasing anymore. Yeah. You know, so you, you start to freak out, you know, because I think that you're so used to seeing that scale number, you know, and, and I think that through that process, though, you know, it's important to understand that each there each uh, part of the process has a phase. Yes. And the, if you can not take the shortcuts 
and do each one of those chapters mindfully and intentionally. Mm -hmm. It is ama- you are going to fall down, but it's amazing how it's going to allow you to get right back. So how do people yeah. stop themselves from the urge of skipping stages, skip, skipping phases, yeah. right? So if you, because I'm pretty sure you've experienced that personally and with clients that mm-hmm. they want to expedite the process, give people some advice on how to just chill. And, and, mm-hmm. and understand that it's going to be like not be in a hurry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's remembering how long you've been out of shape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long have you had these habits that have been there that are extremely destructive? They've been there for a long time. Yeah. So it's not going to be six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks later that they're all gone, you know, and we were talking about that as we walked up the hill yeah. a little bit, but is that I think that it's very, very important, very important for, for, <clears throat> As you're going through, you know, this process to to understand that things aren't going to change overnight. Yeah. You are going to fail in many different things. But I think every time you fall down, but you get back up quicker, mm-hmm. you build a little bit of a strength yeah. to continue to move sure. forward, you know. And, and I, I think that if it was all, you know, um, if it was easy, everybody would do it, yeah. for one. 93% of individuals that lose weight six weeks later regain the weight. Wow. I believe that 93% is because of that quick fix, Mm -hmm. quick shortcut jump that it doesn't last. You know, it just doesn't last. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So I'm a big believer that self-awareness is one of the most important tools when it comes to body transformation, when it comes to achieving any goal in life period, but specifically, obviously, because that's what this podcast is about. I think self-awareness is important. First and foremost, uh, how self-aware are you? Do you consider yourself extremely self-aware? I am now, mm-hmm. not through the process. I mean, sometimes you get stuck in a process, and and you're uh, you're so fixated on where you're going or what you're doing that man, you don't even look stop long enough to look around you and see where you are and yeah. things that you have to work on. And I mean, <clears throat> I say that it is incredibly crucial to have people that are in your life that are going to be a rear view mirror for you. Mm-hmm or a mirror for you so that you can actually see and be called out on things and just be challenged because again, we run with blinders on at times and it is so important to have those people around you that can, can say, Hey, like take a step back, Mm -hmm. slow down. You know, I think that that's something that's important and most people, they don't have that accountability or they don't have that support system, not because it's not there, but because they stay in the dark to themselves and they don't believe that they're worth or able or capable of actually making that change or yeah you know yeah so so let me ask you this because it's obviously it's your you're living your purpose so your journey was a big part of why you were born Mm -hmm. right to be doing what you're doing right now to be (laughs) servicing your clients and Mm -hmm. and spreading the the good news of wellness right so if you're if you if that wasn't attached to your purpose Without the self-awareness, do you think you would have been able to achieve the transformation? Impossible. Yeah. Well, l- let me backtrack. I would have achieved the weight loss, but I wouldn't have achieved sustaining lifestyle change mm-hmm. without that self-awareness. Because so, so, so you would have lost the weight, but you probably would have gained it back. I did it. You know, I, I lost 143 pounds in nine months. A year later, I gained it all back. Wow. I gained 150 back. But why is that? Because my purpose and my motive at that time was to prove everybody wrong that said, what happened so to you this had the dude? wrong. You had the wrong fuel. You had Absolutely. the wrong fuel. I think that your intention, I think, you know, and I talk to people all the time about find your deeper reason and your why yeah. of why you want to make the changes that you want to do in your life or else they will be short lived. If you're doing it for an ex-girlfriend, if you're doing it for a, for a family member, if you're doing it to get notoriety on Instagram, I'm telling you right now, the minute you realize people don't really care, they don't care. that you lost the weight or they that you're on your care. journey, you will feel alone and you will lose your, your sight on what you're trying to do. So, so this is the thing, right? Because I feel like a lot of people, they start with the wrong fuel and I don't have, I don't judge and I, I understand because I started with the wrong fuel too. I wanted to prove people wrong. I wanted to, you know, show, let me, let me show you guys what I, what I can do. Right. But eventually the fuel switched and I was able to maintain. So here's the thing. I think momentum is very, very important. Mm. So whatever it is, 
that is fueling you in the beginning, use it. But use it with the mm-hmm. understanding that if it's if it's not the right type of fuel, if it's not really about you and health and deeper deeper meanings, it's not going to last. Yeah. You trying to get back at your ex, that's a good fuel to start with, but mm-hmm. it's not going to take you to the finish line. Yeah. You know? So so what are your thoughts about that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it has to transition. Yeah. I mean, you you might start off and you want to be beach ready mm-hmm. or you might start off and you want to, you know, get the girl or whatever. Yeah. It might start off that way, um, but I think that if it doesn't transition midway through, yeah, you know, it won't be sustained. Um, I, I, I think, you know, and that's why when I'm working with individuals or uh, even going back and forth on DM with, with people that I don't even work with, you know, I talk about finding your deeper reason. And you got to dig deep, 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 deeper than the diet, deeper than the uh, exercise, deeper than any of that. You've got to dig deep. So when you're coaching someone, help them find their, their reason, their reason why, right? Mm-hmm. That the, the, t- the true why that's going to fuel them to the finish line. Mm-hmm. How do you coach someone towards that? Um, I think it's all in a stepping stone process. Uh, you know, at first we need to identify why they're in the place that they are. Mm-hmm. Why are you 356? Why are you suicidal? Why are you dealing with bouts of depression every other day when you're not clinically depressed? Mm-hmm. You got to dig deep and find out so what that is. It takes courage to have that level of honesty with yourself, right? So, and transparency. Then, yeah, right? it's, it's, and it's hard. So, yeah. but and, don't, and, and, mm-hmm. and, and that's why I think it's, it's very important for people to be ready. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to be ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember not being ready. I've, I remember having all the tools, all the resources, but I just wasn't ready. Yeah. So how do, if someone identifies, listen, I'm just not ready, but they want to be ready. Mm-hmm. How, how could you, how can we help them realize, you know, like, and that's, I know that's, that's a lot of layers mm-hmm. to that, you know, mm-hmm. but what would be your response to yeah. that? 